Hello, I'm Mary Colbert. Welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Channel. We are excited about bringing you some of the newest, most up-to-date information um, on uh, gut. And, I mean, that's such a raw word, but mm -hmm. it covers many parts. It's not just your stomach, it's your intestines, it's your small and large intestines. So it's the whole gut area is what we're talking about today. Well, most disease actually begins in the small intestines, in the duodenum, where it's wow. damaged. It's damaged by what we're eating. Stress will damage it. And people say, why are we seeing so much leaky gut? Well, it's because of the days we're living in, the tremendous stress. Stress will literally cause leaky gut in many patients, as well as the foods we eat, the genetically modified foods, the Splenda, which is, Splenda, which is sucralose, just came out and they found out that Splenda actually damages and fragments the DNA. It also kills the good bacteria and it causes, can set the stage for dysbiosis. So, and we so just people, found out about stevia. Not all not stevia, stevia. Not stevia, erythritol. Erythritol is that's a, added, that's in added stevia. to the stevia. So you don't want the so stevia with that. Erythritol can cause uh, blood clots and plaque and uh, heart attacks and strokes, sure. So again, we have to be careful and avoid especially Splenda and erythritol. And a lot of these artificial sweeteners are terrible too. They disrupt mm -hmm. the gut. Stevia is a healthy one, and that's what I'll add to my tea or my coffee, just a little, because you add too much, it'll cause gut issues too. And that's what we use in our products for right. sweetening is stevia. Okay, now, leaky gut. What, why are we seeing so much leaky gut? Well, it's mainly because our gut has been breached by antibiotics, as well as anti-inflammatory meds, as well as chlorine. When you drink chlorine and water, it kills the good bacteria. Mm. When we take um, acid-blocking agents like... Um, proton pump inhibitors, the little purple pill, Nexium, Prilosic, it shuts off the hydrochloric acid. And God designed our body to produce hydrochloric acid because it kills the bacteria. Do you think fluoride uh -huh. kills good Absolutely. bacteria? Absolutely, fluoride. Well, Every the time kids you... swallow toothpaste. So I that's... know, it's killing their good bacteria. When you, and that's why I use a non-fluoride toothpaste, <coughs> now, because fluoride, if you don't rinse your mouth out thoroughly, it will kill good bacteria and create a condition called dysbiosis, which is an overgrowth of bad bacteria. And I discuss these in the book, pesticides. A lot of our foods contain pesticides that are sprayed on the foods. And a lot of genetically modified foods contain pesticides like glyphosate, which is Roundup, which most all wheat contains glyphosate. That's why people are getting so fat because you're getting the wheat germ gluten, but you're getting the glyphosate, which is killing your good bacteria. It's a pesticide. And as a result, you're getting dysbiosis and a lot of bloating and gas. We, a lot of people should give up their wheat. Wheat is just terrible for your gut. Wheat contains gluten. Gluten pries open those tight junctions and creates a leaky gut situation. I'm once glad the you gut said has been, that. Once Our it's products been are gluten free and dairy free. Yes. Right, but also um, intestinal infections. And again, it, it could be bacterial intestinal infections, bacterial gastroenteritis. It can be parasitic gastroenteritis like Giardia or amoeba. It can be uh, fungal or yeast gastroenteritis. It can be SIBO. It can be SIFO. It's any kind of intestinal infection. It can be viral gastroenteritis can set the stage for leaky gut. As well as um, those are the main things. NSAIDs we talked about, which is ibuprofen, Aleve, and um, you know aspirin. So those are the main things. But once the gut's been compromised, then certain foods make it worse. Foods, especially mm. sugars, ex excessive carbohydrates, especially highly processed carbohydrates, and starches, and fruit juices, and dairy will make it, and beans, and peas, and lentils, and peanuts, and anything that makes you bloat, like cruciferous veggies. So again, a lot of these people, they, they start to have all these gut issues, and they're wondering what, and if everything they eat, their gut just will enlarge, like someone's blowing them up with a, you know, with a tire pump or something like that. I see people, and this is a condition we call usually SIBO or SIFO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or small intestinal fungal overgrowth, which we'll talk about uh, shortly, okay? But again, the symptoms of leaky gut are usually, uh, they start to have gut issues. They start to have gut pain, bloating, diarrhea, loose stools, and then what is happening, those tight junctions are being pried open 
And so partially digested food molecules are being absorbed into the bloodstream. They create tremendous inflammation along the lining of the gut. Then they create a toxicity to the liver as all that overburden goes to the liver, the liver stress. The liver has over 500 duties, so it's not able to do its house cleaning duties. So you start getting tired, run down. Then it starts to affect the, uh, the blood brain barrier. When you have a leaky gut, you can develop a leaky blood, blood brain barrier. Then you start developing brain fog, fatigue, and gluten can actually affect the brain. We see amazing issues with the brain, people on gluten and with leaky gut. Mm -hmm. And then it can develop mental issues, uh, depression, anxiety, panic, schizophrenia, as well as autoimmune diseases. That's when the autoimmune diseases occur. I have found most everyone with autoimmune diseases also has a leaky gut. The worst the autoimmune disease, generally the worst the leaky gut. You say, how do you find leaky gut? There's tests we do, uh, such as the Genova GI effects test, which is this right here. And this literally can measure uh, the degree of leaky gut. It measures inflammation in the gut. It measures maldigestion, inflammation, dysbiosis, metabolic imbalances, and infection. And there's also another really good test I do called the uh, Diagnostic Solution GI map. Here's, here's a patient I just recently did, and we found out this was a patient who was having tremendous gas and symptoms like that, and found out that he had a bacteria that was excessive in his gut called Methanobacter terace, uh smithii, which is associated with methane gas. See, there's, wow. see uh, methane gas, this bacteria produces methane gas, so we found it. We found out exactly what antibiotics and natural agents kill it. And in his case, it was oregano, <laughs> okay? Oregano. So, yeah. so how would if he had gotten this weird bacteria? Well, again, it's usually from antibiotics. When you, get, when you take a lot of antibiotics and uh, you're having all these gut issues, and he was having a lot of gas and bloating, and uh, there's different kinds of gas that we, when we eat sugars and carbohydrates, the bacteria convert the sugars into gas. It can be just simple hydrogen gas or CO2 or nitrogen gas, or it can produce methane. Now, methane gas is rotten eggs. When a person passes gas and they have rotten egg smell, that's methane gas. That means they have that methanobacter smithii bacteria in their gut because we culture it out. We do the uh, the and diagnostic how can they solution fix that? Map. What do they do to turn we that off? We take oregano. We have a spe it usually it works. We have a special oregano. I don't I don't it's not my product. It's called it's from Biotics Research and I put them on this sustained release oregano. It's called ADP from Biotics Research and if you can't get it on the website, you can get it on on their website and get it on our website or not our, our at our office, excuse me. And you take one before each meal and at bedtime for about six, six weeks, sometimes longer. And what that does is it kills usually that bad bacteria, that uh, methanobacter smithii. Wow. And then most of that methane gas will go away. But then you also have to plant the good bacteria and you have to repair the gut. You have to mm. do all three and then the body's able to heal, the gut's able to heal. And that's what we did with this fella, and now he's doing great. We recognize that it's very difficult to get in to see Dr. Colbert as a patient. It's not impossible, but- But that's why I have nurse becoming, practitioners. Yeah, yeah, we have nurse practitioners that he's training, so if you can't see him, you can see them, and he oversees it. But more importantly, we know we're not cheap because we only see a few people a day because he spends so much time with you. So. It's just a math thing, one and one is two. That's why we're doing these videos, because we know you probably can't get in to see him, travel to see him, stay in a hotel. So Don decided to put all of his information out there for the public and show to your doctor and try to get answers for you so you can take to your practitioner and get him to watch these videos or her to watch these videos and learn some of this stuff to implement because we really want to see the health in this country and the world. We really want to see it turn around because there's a lot of good that's going on in the medical field, but there's a <clears> lot <throat> of ignorance going on in the medical field because not all doctors know the same thing. And that's, that's the myth. People think, oh, if I go to my doctor, 
He knows everything else Dr. Colbert knows. No, no. They don't. I've been studying. <laughs> now, let me explain why. I started learning this in the late 1980s, way before anyone was even delving into this, because what had happened in the late 1980s, I developed psoriasis. And I woke up one day and I had this horrible rash all over my body, all over my hands, my arms, my elbows, my knees, my buttocks, horrible itching rash. I went to, to make a long story short, I went to my dermatologist, I'll never forget him looking at me. He had his glasses down in his nose, he looked over his glasses, and he shook his head. He says, Don, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, you have the heartbreak. And he emphasized the word heartbreak. I said, wait, my heart's not been broken. He said, I don't care, you've got the heartbreak of psoriasis. And so he ripped out his script pad and he wrote down there real quick. He wrote, coal tar with aquaphor aqua. It's the most nasty stuff you've ever seen. Horrible. It was orange ointment that smelled like tar that they tar roads with. And I put it all over my body, on my arms, on my elbows, on my hands. I was covered. And, uh, and then literally when people would, I'd walk in the exam room, people would say, what's that horrible smell and why? Everything you're touching is turning orange. I mean, my seats and my car turned orange, my sheets turned orange, my pillowcase turned everything turned orange. Now, he was a provider for United Healthcare <laughs> at that time, and he was one of the largest family practice in all of Central Florida. He was seeing like 78 patients a day, horrible health care, horrible. Well, I, only, I was only able to spend 10 minutes with him. I was working 10 to 10, 12 hours a day. 10, more like five, you know, <laughs> uh, because... But I learned real quick, I'm not going to practice med like, medicine like yeah, this anymore. Yeah, he, he went into family practice. He was board certified in family practice for years, and that's what he did. And I'll never forget the day he came home and took the keys and threw them across the counter. He goes... I didn't go into medicine for this. I went into medicine to make a difference in people's lives. And he goes, all I am is a legalized drug pusher. People come in and put their hand out and want that quick fix. And he goes, that is terrible it's medicine. Terrible. It is terrible. And I'm telling you that hmm. day he quit. I did. That's it, man. He's I he said, That's canceled. It being a part of any health care insurance. And I said, I'm going to spend an hour with each patient and get to the root of the problem. And this was in the 1990s. I know. Everybody thought we would with, go under, yes. thought we were crazy. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. When you do the right thing for the right reason, God will bless it every time. Let and me get did. back to my story. All right. I had psoriasis. I was frustrated. I got sick and tired of using this coal tar ointment and stinking. But then I started thinking, how did I get this? No one in my family has this. And I realized I was in practice in 1987 when I started. I was a solo practitioner. I had no backup. I was on call every night. I'd be awakened at first, not at all. And then as, I, as time went on, I was awakened at least a few times a week. It messed my sleep up. I'd get sick. I'd get a sinus infection or something. I didn't have time to be sick. I couldn't miss work. Took an antibiotic. And so this would happen about every four months or so. And then after doing this for a few years, all of a sudden I woke up one morning covered with psoriasis. And that's where I was. Then I started thinking and I started going to seminars and learning about gut health. Back then they didn't have hardly anything. Back then they didn't have hardly any probiotics. They were all refrigerated because we didn't have these super probiotics like we have now. And they didn't have uh, the right uh, materials to heal the gut. So I had to kind of do trial and error. I didn't realize the foods that fed the uh, bad bacteria. So I had to learn all this, and so while well, trial and error, and with bacteria, with healthy bacteria, I finally restored my gut in the early 90s. I overcame psoriasis. No one could believe it. You, you said something, and I'm, I know people's thoughts just went right there when you said, I figured out things that feed the bad bacteria. Yes, what which I was doing. Like? See, every day, and when your flesh craves something that's generally a main clue that you're inflaming your gut because the flesh is dumb. It almost always craves the very <laughs> foods that cause the health issue. And what so every true. day, what I was doing at lunch, because I didn't have time to go out because I was so busy. So I'd have my uh, girls go to um, Pollo Tropical, which is a great little restaurant. It has chicken, it has salsa, and I'd eat the roll and I'd get some white rice and some beans. Now, every one of those foods I was eating was damaging my gut. Let me explain why. First of all, nightshades contain lectins that are highly damaging to your gut. And nightshade is? Nightshade are tomatoes and peppers and paprika and potatoes and eggplant. And these uh, nightshades contain lectins 
that irritate and damage your gut once it's been compromised. See, what I had done, right. I'd taken antibiotics, I'd nuked all my good bacteria, I'd disrupted the, the, um, the tight junctions, and then all of a sudden I was taking these lectins that were prying open my tight junctions so that literally my colon was leaking just like that analogy I gave you of the coffee filter and I punched holes with an ice pick and then I put, poured the coffee in there and then my coffee were coffee grounds. Similar thing was happening to my colon because, or my, excuse me, not my colon, my small intestines because what was happening, the foods I was eating, the, the, the tomatoes, the peppers, the gluten was prying open these tight junctions and the beans. Beans are highest in lectins of any foods and they were prying these open. Then the white rice was processed and it was like feeding the bad bacteria. So I had the perfect storm. Now he's not saying these foods <laughs> are bad for everybody. That's not what he's saying. But they're but if bad if you've got a leaky gut. If you've got leaky yes. gut, you right. can begin to eliminate these foods from your diet. If, and see you, if you don't have see an improvement. a leaky gut, what your body needs is you need very low or no sugars, low carbohydrates, and low starches. And that's why I devised a diet in my Healthy Gut Zone cookbook, my Healthy Gut Zone book, and in my Beyond Keto book. That's a low carbohydrate, low starch, no sugar diet. And olive oil, lots of olive oil, which helps to heal the gut. So I started doing this, and then from doing this, it became a lifestyle because I learned when my gut was happy, I was happy. When my gut was I was happy. happy. Yes. I got to tell you, I was happy. <laughs> when his gut was happy, I was very happy. And so I learned by trial and error, when I would eat those beans, my gut was real unhappy. Any gluten, horribly unhappy. Any sugar, horribly. I had to move outside and sleep outdoors. <laughs> so again, my gut healed. I planted the good bacteria. We killed all the bad bacteria with natural means, oregano. I love that oregano. It helps. And so I was able to heal my gut and I made this program so easy for everyone else in doing so. Now, uh, my psoriasis healed. I've not had a problem with psoriasis since then. Now I have had a problem with irritable bowel since then because I went skiing, uh, mm -hmm. that's water skiing, and then my son said, hey dad, can you get up on my wakeboard? <laughs> well, my book, uh, back then I was weighing 220 pounds and my boat was not strong enough to pull me up. So I was drinking the lake water Oh, and I happened to get, about two weeks later, I got a horrible intestinal infection where I was having diarrhea and bloating and gas, and it was turned out to be Giardia. Well, Do not drink lake water. No, please. Do not drink ocean water. Mo no, most of the lakes <laughs> are full of a parasite called Giardia. Now, we can easily find it out with this little test that I do called Diagnostic Solution GI Map. Here it is right here. And we can see if you have it. And, and there's another one you can do, which is the Genova Diagnostics GI Effects. I do these on a lot of patients. Some patients need both, some patients need none. Well, I treated myself with metronidazole or Flagyl for, for seven to 10 days, I forget. But then after that, the diarrhea continued. And I wondered, how, wondered why, and then mm -hmm. later I realized once you take those antibiotics, it kills even more good bacteria. So back and then- And I have to tell you, during this time, this was really a very stressful time for him too, because um, here he could not turn off this diarrhea and he was losing weight like crazy. Right, I couldn't and keep my weight up. And he could not keep his weight up. And of course, you know, people watching him on TV and stuff be very critical and yeah. it was just horrible. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible time, like, what's wrong with Dr. Colbert? And why is he, he's getting too thin. And I'm so like, then I they learned, have no right. idea what he's battling. So that's what led me with all these years, we finally got all the pieces of the puzzle put together. Mm -hmm. I started healing the gut. Mm -hmm. I found out the foods that irritated the gut. They were all the high sugar foods and the lectins and foods that I loved and craved. When I switched more to a beyond keto type of diet or what I call a gut zone friendly diet, it started putting in the nutrients and the olive oil, high polyphenol olive oil that heals the gut. And then I started sealing those tight junctions. And how did we do that? Well, I found a major product that is so good. Number one, our collagen heals it for most patients, just a, a scoop two or three times a day. This works. It works wonderfully. Another supplement that helps a lot of people is just you get from the grocery store or a health food store. It's called bone organic bone broth soup. Uh, usually two to four cups of bone broth soup a day usually heals the gut. It has glutamine, glycine, and collagen in it that helps to heal the gut. 
Another's just L-glutamine, two to 5,000 milligrams a day or twice a day. I know it's a lot, but that does help. But one product I really like is from a company called uh, Orthomolecular, and it's called SBI Protect. This has immunoglobulins in it that help to kill off the bad microbes in the gut, and it helps to restore the integrity of the gut and helps to restore the microbiome. And taken four a day is absolutely amazing at many of my patients in healing leaky gut when it's severe. We so, literally saw a miracle with you. Yes, after amazing hot work. It was like so, a miracle. And then planting the good bacteria. Now, for the majority of patients, just my biotic is great. It contains these powerful living bacteria, which uh, I, I combine lactobacillus planetarium with bifidobacteria brevis and, and uh, lactis, as well as I have these uh, bacillus subtilis and coagulans, which are these powerful uh, probiotics that literally colonize the gut they're living and they start to repair the gut and they start to train the immune system how to prevent infections. Mm. And there's others I use for some people. Megasporbiotic is another good probiotic uh, that you can get at health food stores for severe problems like, for example, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. They usually need a probiotic like Visbiome that has to be refrigerated. You say, where do I get that? You get it from visbiome.com or from my pharmacy, Las Colinas pharmacy in Las Colinas, Texas, which is 10 minutes away from my office here they in formulate Texas. They formulate Right. I mean, right. Exactly right. We're now, in South Lake, Texas. our biotics, you take it on an empty stomach. Right. So we recommend, I do two in the morning, like at five o'clock in the morning before I ever have anything, just to, so it's replenishing right. now, good bacteria. In when my you, now, what I do is I take, in the morning, I take my probiotic. Some days I'll take two, but usually we, I take one but for some, they'll need two, and we're coming out with a 60 count. And also, what I do soon afterwards, I take my fiber zone. I take a scoop with four ounces of cold water. You can take more water. Why? Because this feeds the good bacteria. The good bacteria literally feed on the fiber and the inulin in here. Isn't that amazing? So it that, feeds. That is amazing. It feeds on the inulin? Inulin and the... Uh, psyllium husk powder that's in it. It causes it to like multiply. Yes. And grow. It wow. may, they reproduce. And then also what I did in, in the probiotic, I put a small dose of prebiotic in the form of uh, fructooligosaccharide and galactooligosaccharide, which is one of the most powerful prebiotics that helps feed the good bacteria so they do not die and they keep multiplying. So that's why I love this formulation. Now, if a person has severe IBS or SIBO or SIFO, they have to be real careful on fiber. We're going to talk about irritable bowel and SIBO and SIFO in the next podcast. Next, okay, and why do you have these here? Now, this is for irritable bowel. This is our hemp oil because we find that so many people with irritable bowel, it's a mind-gut connection where their bowels are irritable because they're too stressed. And so when they're too stressed, their bowel goes into hyper-functioning state where it goes into diarrhea, constipation, gut pains. They pass mucus. They, they just have these horrible gut issues. They go to their doctor or their gastroenterologist. They check their gut and their colon. It's totally normal. It's a functional GI disorder with no pathology in the gut. But it's, it's they have a hypersensitive GI tract. It means that it's more uh, susceptible to stress. And what do you this, do? The hemp oil simply calms down the stress, calms down the gut, so that the gut's able to relax and heal. That's People all it who does. have a lot of anxiety and nervous. Anxiety, they, stress, they irritable bowel. They swear by this product. They swear by when it. When we start it. running alone, they just panic. No, yes. you don't understand. <laughs> no, I face. have to have my hemp oil. Um, why do you have chelated magnesium well, here? Well, this is for constipation. Realize about 75% of Americans do not get enough magnesium. I you believe need that. 420. So just uh, two of these a day, one twice a day or two in the evening, gives you your magnesium. And realize, too, that 90% of women do not get enough fiber mm. and 97% of men don't get enough fiber. So wow. that's why I take a scoop of the fiber zone. I take a heaping scoop, actually, in the it morning does. and the evening. And it is amazing how this helps my gut. And again, the probiotic and the collagen. And uh, I don't use the hemp oil. I don't have any IBS now. I don't have any leaky gut now. My Nothing. gut is healed. I don't You're have any psoriasis now. Nothing. I'm healed. Uh, Remember not to take the fiber, though, with any meds. It'll bind them. Well, don't, you them don't want to take, what I like to do is now, again, you can take fiber after meals. It lowers cholesterol. It lowers blood sugar. 
but if you take your supplements, it'll bind some of your supplements. So you just want to take your supplements apart from it. And right. Your That's all. Allow, what, 30 minutes afterwards you've taken it? At least 30 minutes. At least right. 30 minutes, and then it'd be safe to take it. Don, you've got such good information here. I hope it, it's uh, amazing information. Like yeah. I say, so many people think, "Oh, I've seen my doctor, and he's given me all of these meds and all that I'm taking." Realize, medicines are meant for one thing: it turns off the symptoms. It does not get to the root of the problem. Right. The, it's a pr simple problem. Once I figured this thing out and I cleared it up, and mm -hmm. it took me years to figure everything out, especially when I got psoriasis. It took me a few years to figure that out. When I got Giardia, oh my gosh, and then I took the metronidazole or Flagyl, it cleared the Giardia, the foul-smelling stools went away, but my goodness, the diarrhea didn't for years, so I had I to know. figure that out. So I went through this for years. I am saving you years and years of torment and torture to heal your gut up because we have got the key answers, and the key answer is real simple. Number one, it's the gut zone diet. Now, you can also do the healthy keto diet. But the, the Gut Zone Diet, it's the Gut Zone Cookbook helps you to literally put the key foods together to heal your gut. And then the key answer is the biotics. The biotics, one or two in the morning. If you've got a bad gut, take two. And then about 20, 30 minutes later, or you can take it just shit soon after. I'll take mine about five minutes later. I'll take my Fiber Zone, take your collagen, a scoop twice a day usually. If you're having irritable bowel symptoms, do not start on the fiber and, uh, until your irritable bowel is clear, then just start small amounts. And then realize if you have severe leaky gut, you're gonna need either organic bone broth, two to four cups a day, or you're gonna need this Orthomoleculars SBI Protect, four capsules in the morning with your probiotic. It is amazing how it heals Yeah, I, gut. a few years ago, we took a trip to some very cold weather and I got strep throat. And when I got back, man, my throat felt like it was shards of glass. Mm -hmm. And I insisted. And Don goes, no, I can give you some <laughs> other stuff did. that, you know, it'll heal it without. I said, oh, man, I am in so much pain, Don. I said, give me the guns. I want She's the guns. Like, I want the strongest antibiotic <laughs> I can get. She <laughs> I, says, I've got shards of glass. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I repent for saying that. Because uh, within 24 hours, I broke out with the worst rash, and I was on fire, on fire. I had such a severe reaction um, to this. I'd never had it before, and so my body was quite upset at me. Don goes, okay, you've just killed all your good bacteria, <laughs> know, okay. we and heal we you just got to heal your gut. And I go, how long, Don? 30 days. Give me 30 days. And I thought, 30 days? I'm in... I'm in such pain and I'm on fire. Let me add something real quick. Okay. The hardest thing, I had to put her on a low histamine diet. Everything she ate contained histamine. Histamine <sighs> is in chocolate. It's in coffee. It's in tomatoes. I it's know in what citrus, histamine means. It's in strawberries. <laughs> it's in any processed meat. It's in any kombucha and yogurt and kefir and sauerkraut. Oh, those and it are was my diet. With histamine. <laughs> and, and, she, and yes, that was her diet. She she, she didn't eat that. But she would eat the chocolate. But to get to the point, what he did is he put me on collagen. He put me on the fiber. He put me on strong antibiotics and bam. Not antibiotics. I put Not you on antibiotics. I mean probiotics. probiotics. Yeah. Bam, it healed. And I have... One been, month. Literally, almost one month to the, to day, the day, it was healed. My GI tract was restored. <laughs> I'm just Praise telling God. you the story because if you've gone through this, I just want to give you hope. Amen. It can happen. You can be healed. God has an answer for every, every disease. And it's our job to find it. And we're going to try to find it and bring it to you. Thank you for staying too. Go to drcolbert.com. Become a partner with us in Divine Health. With what we're doing, when you become a monthly uh, partner with our products, you're supporting what we're doing. And we thank you and we love you. God bless you. And we'll be back with you with part three on healing the gut, Amen. the healthy gut God zone. God bless you. Bye.